Harper Boulevard Bully. Anyone that wonders if the Plymouth Division is still in the high-performance picture need only take a look at their lineup for 69. With a powerhouse Cuda, Roadrunner, and this GTX, it requires very little imagination to visualize the Mopar banner in the competition circles. Our GTX and the Roadrunner feature this performance paint treatment, two 24-inch stripes of black textured non-glare paint on the hood. This sporty performer rides on 116-inch wheelbase with a front tracking width of 59 and a half inches and 58 and a half in the rear. The horizontal bars running between the dual exposed headlights give the grille a broad, clean look. The overall width is 76.4 inches. The Giddick signature is conspicuously displayed on the rear quarter panels. Our GTX had the cool air induction system called the Air Grabber. On the Roadrunner, it's called the Coyote Duster. And it really works to increase engine efficiency and performance by pushing either outside or inside air into the engine. Trap doors designed to alter the flow of air are operated by a Bowden cable installed under the instrument panel. At high RPMs, this 440-incher breathes great big chunks of atmosphere through one Carter four-barrel carburetor and delivers 375 horsepower at 4,600 RPMs. The sit-down area in front consisted of two very comfortable buckets giving excellent back support. With over 41 inches of legroom, even the tallest guys were in good shape. This was not the case in back, but then it never is, unless you buy a limousine. Anyone performance-oriented enough to enjoy gauges and numbers and stuff like that has to flip over this dashboard. It makes the driver feel as though he's running the thing, not a computer. When we got to the track, we found the pylons all set up, so we made these runs first and found that the Giddix has a crazy set of legs. Our driver whipped it through at about 50 miles an hour, and at no time did the body leave the wheel. So you can check body roll for yourself. This is the way it looks from the inside. This head-on run was filmed in slow motion by one of our more courageous cameramen. For a 4,000-pound bomb, this car leans very little and showed excellent rebound and recovery. The goldfish bowl on the front seat slopped over a little bit, but the car hung in beautifully. Down the quarter mile route to Squealsville, we had 30 miles an hour in 3.2. Hemi Mama, but it's quick. We nailed 45 miles an hour on the clock in 4.4. A Sox and Martin weekend wonder it wasn't. But for a two-ton strictly stocker, it came out of the hole pretty well. Our 60 mile an hour run tripped the clock in 7.1 seconds. In the stop department, this was the best Plymouth we ever had. Braking was far straighter and distances shorter than any of the 68 models. From 30 miles an hour, 34 feet. We had power discs up front with a single piston operation. From 45 miles an hour, it took 55 feet to stop. We made several 50 mile an hour stops and noticed that brake fade was only slight. The binders were hot when we made this 65 mile an hour stop and she still shut down in 179 feet. The GTX is a strong performer and we gave it a hard workout. We do this every year. And this heavy duty suspension system has a big beefy feeling that invites hard cornering. And the wide polyglass tires give an even greater margin of security. In the front end, we had wishbones with a big fat torsion bar. And under the rear end, they employ semi-elliptic leaf springs with a live axle. Steering is about neutral at moderate speeds. However, in high speed cornering, there's a slight hint of oversteer. But with the use of the throttle connected to that big 440 cubic incher up front, you can bring it through in an easy four-wheel drift. We took our tester over many miles of rutted dirt and gravel roads, as well as city driving and heavy traffic, and never experienced any feeling of fatigue. 
However, it was on the track at high speeds and hard cornering that we gained real respect for the GTX. They glued this car together well, and after we twisted it every way but loose, it was still ready to go. If you're a car buyer that falls in the family category, and you still have a strong zest for living, this one could be your bag. It's the kind of a car that can add a sparkle to even the most monotonous drive. The Giddix has always been a good car, but the 69 is the best one yet.